Electronic Transactions Contract Formation Amendment Bill Committee Stage. I declare the House and Committee for consideration of the Electronic Transactions Contract Formation Amendment Bill. Mr Chairman. Mr Speaker. Honourable members, the House is in committee. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koe e te whare, e ngā iwi, e ngā reo, e ngā hau e whā. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Kei te pai. Members, we move now to the Electronic Transactions Contract Formation Amendment Bill, and the question before the committee is that Clause 1 stand part. Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Member Paul Goldsmith. Thank you, Mr Chair. It's very kind of you uh, to give me an opportunity to talk about this bill which uh, I brought to Parliament. And the, we're dealing here first with Clause 1, which is the title, uh, and the Act is the Electronic Transactions Contract Formation Amendment Act 2012 uh, Bill. Well, yes, the, uh, yes, thank you very much. And uh, what I wanted to say, uh, I thought we could just have some opening remarks uh, about uh, contract formation and why that is an important uh, area of law. And most importantly, that people need to know uh, that their contracts will be honoured in life and in business, and that's a very important function of the law. Clear and predictable laws, Mr Chair, governing gov uh, commerce are some of the foundations of our successful society. In, and, a mono, and part of the uh, foundation of a successful economy. But the fundamentals of business haven't changed over the years in that trading is amongst the most natural activities of, human, of humanity. It's a civilising activity at, at bottom because it's about making an arrangement uh, between, uh, from which both parties will benefit. And, and people only make uh, deals if... Uh, both of them will flourish. And so most of all, trade flourishes when there's a shared understanding of the rules. And I trust this bill will go some way uh, to add to that shared understanding, which is so important in contract law. Clarity and uncertainty, uh, and certainty lead to confidence, and confidence leads to greater investment. Investments lead to jobs and employment and economic growth, uh, which drives the economy uh, so that we can afford uh, the quality health care, the decent education, the support from the vulnerable, all those sorts of things which this government supports. Uh, in this first re in the, my first reading speech uh, for this bill, I said, well, this bill may not on its own bring about the brighter future to which we all aspire and to which this government is so committed, but it is a small and useful addition to that lasset work. Thank you. So this bill tidies up one small area of uncertainty and will go some way to increase the flow of business. And given the prevalence, given the prevalence of uh, pro, uh, electronic communications in society today, including email, smartphones, social media, Twitter, all those things, it is useful that the current Act be amended to cover such areas. So, uh, now, uh, I confess I'm not a lawyer, uh, and so... Uh, in fact, I, I actually started off uh, studying a law degree at the University of Auckland, but uh, found it wasn't to my taste, and so uh, rather indulgently, and I can't believe it that I did that now. I can't believe it now, but I decided, I, I turned down my place at law school at Auckland University and decided to do a BA in history. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the rest, as I say, uh, the rest, as I say, is history, that's right. And so I didn't get uh, to study law, but funnily enough, here we are in the House, uh, detailed in the, embroiled in the details of uh, law. So uh, I just wondered if I could just uh, take a little bit of time just at, at this first opening address to uh, bring out some of the, uh, the, the details, what, what, the origins of this uh, bill that we've got before us. And in essence, it's about bringing clarity to the question of electronic transactions, hence the title electronic transactions contract formation amendment bill. So, uh, and in essence, the bill clarifies a point of contract law, which is currently vague. 
Its purpose is to clarify, simply to clarify, the legal position on the time at which a contract is formed if the acceptance of the offer is sent by some form of electronic communication. And the Bill recognises the need for contractual transactions to join the electronic age, Mr Chair. The general rule of contract formation is that a contract is formed at the time of acceptance of the offer. Uh, acceptance of the offer is communicated to the offerer. So when somebody says, uh, yes, I accept the offer, or the offerer and the acceptor shake hands, then a contract is formed. Now, however, an exception to that rule was formed, uh, created for acceptances created by mail. And this goes back to a famous case that we heard about in some of the early uh, addresses, Adams versus Linsell, 1818. And I might trespass just a little bit to go into the details. Oh, Mr Chair. Paul Goldsmith. Thank you very much. Uh, to explain the case. So the case involved two parties uh, in the sale of wool. And on the 2nd of September, the defendants wrote to the plaintiffs offering to sell them a certain uh, fleeces of wool and requiring an answer in the course on the post. And the, def the defendants, however, misdirect the letter so that the plaintiffs did not receive it until the 5th of September. Now, uh, no, 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 they weren't fleeced. They were trying to buy a fleece. And the plaintiffs, plaintiffs posted their acceptance on the same day, but it was not received until the 9th of September. Meantime, on the 8th of September, the defendants, not having received any answer by the 7th of September, as they had expected, sold the wool to somebody else. Hence the case. Now, the defendants argued that they could not be, there could not be a binding contract, uh, Mr Chair, until the answer was actually received, and until then they were free to sell the wool to another buyer. The judge, however, he said that it, if that was true, it would be impossible to complete any contract through the post because if the defendants were not bound by their offer until the answer was received, then the plaintiffs would not be bound until they received word that the defendants had received their acceptance. And this could go on uh, indefinitely. So instead, it must be considered that the offerers were making the offer to the plaintiffs during every moment that the letter was in the post. And so when the offeree has placed his acceptance in the post, there is a fictional meeting of minds. Uh, Mr Chair, and which concludes that the offer gives effect to the acceptance. So this was tidied further into what was now referred to as the postal acceptance rule. And uh, in the 1892 case, and I won't go into the details of that right now, Henthorne versus Fraser, uh, no, the, where the court determined the precise timing of the acceptance, and that was the moment that the letter of acceptance is posted. Now, now the, the long-standing rule as to the postal acceptance in Adams v Linsell is not appropriate, Mr Chair, I contend, uh, to electronic communications. Uh, this has already been recognised by the courts in relation to uh, acceptance of contractual offers by telex as far back as 1955. Uh, in Torres Limited versus Miles Far East Corporation, which treated the communication being, as with a telephone communication, simultaneous. So the fact in that case involved in Torres Limited a London-based trading company that sent an offer by Telex for the purchase of copper cathodes from a company based in Amsterdam. So there's no clear uh, case authority on acceptance by email, and this bill uh, should it be passed with the will of this House, and I'm very grateful to uh, members right across the House because uh, in the second reading I think we had uh, unanimous uh, support for this bill, and I'm very grateful uh, to members on all sides of the House for their support on this bill. Uh, and I hope we can continue in that spirit of bipartisanship uh, as we go through this uh, rest of the debate this evening. Now. Um, the, position, the postal ex, uh, so this bill provides an appropriate way to deal with email acceptances by providing that an offer that can be accepted by electronic communications is deemed to be accepted at the time of the receipt of the offerer, that is when it arrives in the offerer's inbox. And, and the, as we go into uh, the, the further consideration of this bill in the later clauses, we can look at some of the. Uh, uh, intricacies and nuances around uh, arrival times and 
the definition of receipt, which uh, is a, a great area of discussion and that uh, will hold for a few minutes. Uh, now, I gave very uh, consideration to uh, other potential names. Uh, email contract formation uh, might have been one, but that doesn't cover the full gamut of potential electronic uh, transactions uh, that could be uh, dealt with by this legislation. Uh, text, email and other electronic transactions, contract formation could have done it. Or the, the one that I thought probably covered it most detailed would be to, to call it the electronic transactions brackets, clarifying the moment when a contract is formed when sent by electronic means, close bracket, amendment bill. But I felt that that might have been too uh, wordy and uh, that might not be the first time that I've been accused of being too wordy and I didn't want uh, that reputation to extend. So on that basis, Mr Chair, I was uh, hoping that, um, well, that will do for the time being. Uh, Honourable Chris Tremaine. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Uh